All right, before this video gets started, I just want to make one thing clear. I am not a JavaScript developer. Stop making jokes about how I only talk about JavaScript. I suck at JavaScript. I am not only about JavaScript. I am a Java developer, if anything. It is not JavaScript. All right, React.js. This video is about my experience using React.js. I titled it something like, uh, the pat I've used React.js for six months, 12, I don't know what the heck I titled it, but I've been using React.js for maybe three, four, five years. It's just I haven't been doing it full time or consistently. So if I were to take the little bits and pieces where I've been using React.js and all the different projects, maybe it's whatever the heck this video is titled. Six months, 12 months, if I'm like being nice to myself. Some of these things I talk about are gonna be the cliche like, this is why you use React.js. Uh, yeah, cause this is kind of my experience with the React.js. It is, the only thing I can do is compare it to what I've used in the past, and that is vanilla JavaScript and Angular TypeScript. Not that great at JavaScript, but I try, I try. Who is texting? Oh, just my lovely wife. Okay, I love you too. But yeah, so when I worked as a professional software engineer, I used TypeScript, Angular. Bootstrap for whatever reason, but now I just make everything with react and I use Vite to do it because Apparently create react app is discontinued. It still works. It's just not supported deprecated is the, the the lingo Oh, yeah, and a portion of this video is sponsored by mermaid chart the best way to make charts and diagrams But more than later, but yeah uh, Anyway, I guess I guess the best first place to start is uh, reacts component based architecture, which basically is, it, it lets you render individual components, parts of the UI. It renders all of that. It manages its own state. So you don't have to re-render like the entire page when you want to change something. So what that does, it, it, it makes each component a function. Not really, not, I don't know if that was a good example, but kind of. So like a function, you put something in a function in order to be able to reuse it here, reuse it there, reuse it there, reuse it here. Maybe this is a really bad example, but it's something, it divides it into reusable components. It divides the UI into reusable components. That's probably what I should have said to begin with. And then each component is responsible for rendering that part of the UI and then managing its own state. Component-based architecture, React.js. Maybe it would be a good idea to actually show you some code since we're talking about code. That's probably a good idea. I'll just create a Vite project npm create v at latest v at latest and if you're wondering some of the alternatives to uh react well you have vanilla you have view you have preact you have lit svelte solid quick and others and then you have typescript and javascript my stuff's not serious enough for typescript so i don't even worry about it this is the v project um with react and javascript and this is this is app.jsx mm, let me divide this right click new folder components and I'm going to take this and this counter down here Whoop. actually I should show you how it works npm run dev I should probably npm install I don't know why I do that every single time it just takes forever I'm like oh it must not be working let me quit it and then try it again and then that was not working so let me quit it and then try it again and then I'll wait for the third one I don't know. It feels like it's faster that way. I, it's not. Now we can npm run dev. Whoop. And this do, 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 is Vite plus React. And this is also mostly the context that I have for React. Not all of the context that I have, but most of the context is with Vite because it's easy. And I'm lazy. Okay. So allow me to, I'm going to take that counter out. And then I'm going to, how do I do this? I'm going to take the counter out and then I'm going to put it into a component that I kind of just made. Okay, I have it prepared and we are going to import button from button and then button is going to go right here. And then when I run it, it's still there. So as you can see, button, I threw it in the components folder. That doesn't necessarily make it a component, but in this instance, it is a component and you can kind of see how it works. I have 
beautiful comments here for you to be able to understand. So the state management for this component is managed within the component using hooks like use state. The, all components, the state is managed within the component. That's kind of the point, but it's using hooks like use state, but you also have hooks like use effect, which allows you to perform uh, side effects. Like if you want to um, fetch data or like update something after rendering, that allows you to do that. You also have use ref, which allows you to directly access and manipulate the DOM, which normally you want the you want to let react handle all of that with the virtual dom we'll talk about that in a second but or of course if you want to keep a value across renders and not have it re-render that's hooks and that's a part of the components the component based architecture and then we have encapsulation so each component encapsulates its own logic and ui and then reusable i don't know what the hell happened there. reusability is what i was trying to say and then i read that it said reusable and it just eh, didn't work components can be reused across different parts of the application. So if I wanted to make a new file and say different part .jsx, just different, that's fine. And then we're going to div. See, what I can do is button. No, wait, yeah, that's what I called it, button. Probably should have imported it first for autocomplete. Import button from button. And then I can import different over here and throw, where's the button at? So throw different right here. And technically this is being used twice, but in two different ways. So it is being used once in app.jsx, then used again, not it, through app.jsx, because that's kind of how you get it on the, uh, the UI side of things, but through different, we're calling button, you see? So we're able to, that was a long way to say we're able to reuse it. We're able to reuse it. Great. Okay. That's not really different than other languages or, or frameworks, but I don't know. I just wanted to show you some code, I guess. But what's interesting about it is that so typically you'll have components here, you'll have assets here, you'll have um um folder, you'll have styles here and all the components are together, all the styles are t together. That's kind of how you structure it. Whereas if you were to make something like a, uh, I guess I can actually make it like an Angular project. Let me go back. Let me do this again. What did I, what was that command? npm create vite at latest. So again, we're going to use vite. So we'll keep something consistent. Example, Angular. That sucks. I'm going to have to type in the whole thing in order to get there. Is there not Angular in here? Okay, sick. So supposedly the reason being is that the Angular CLI, I should probably show you this. This is some guy on Stack Overflow. I do not know the legibility of this guy. El elig legibility? I don't know if this guy knows what he's talking about, but he said, Vite does not support Angular and vice versa. The reason being that the Angular CLI does more than the React CLI, for example, and also uses its own compiler called NGC. It is now, it is supported now for Angular 16 plus. You can check the docs. So Angular supports Vite, Vite said no. Okay, so this is how Angular works. So instead of having everything in, you know, all the components are in component, right? And then all the styles are in style, we don't have styles, but you, and then all the assets are in assets and, and it's all separated by what they are. TypeScript is separated by modules. So everything related to a specific module to a specific thing like product alerts is within that specific module. This is product alerts module. It has the styling. It has the HTML. It has the, the TypeScript. And then you can see in the TypeScript that it pulls, you pull in the HTML here, you pull in the CSS here. That's where it all comes together. And then you output it into at module.ts. All of those come in here. And then, uh, at module.ts comes to the main.ts. That's a very loose explanation from somebody who hasn't used Angular in many, many years, but I, I do my best. And look at that, assets has its own folder. Wonderful, JSON. So that's the difference between how you're supposed to work with Angular is that you structure it like this in modules where every single module is all together and then React, it's, it. I don't know why I spent so much time on that because at the end of the day, Actually, React is unopinionated on all of this. This is just kind of how I feel like I always do it in React. But you can you can make modules in React. You can you can have um, 
let's say, a folder that is just button. I don't know if you're supposed to capitalize the module um, folders in React for, for this, but you can just have all of this like this. And then I could also create, you know, button.css and you can have modules in React. That's fine. I don't know why I spent so much time on this, but <laughs> here we are. So I guess now is uh, when I talk about my opinion on CBA, Kubota based architecture, and that is, uh, or I guess my experience with it, whatever the heck this video is about. And that is, uh, well, I like it. Hooks are great. <laughs> I just feel like it makes everything easy. It keeps things typically neat and organized. Again, you know how I structure my React projects. You can also do the module based version. If there's a huge React project, like when I, when I worked with Angular, it was a pretty dang big project, uh, enterprise application for a big company. And it was nice having everything right there together with the same, within the same module. That was nice. So, uh, but you know what else is nice is, is, and I kind of glossed over encapsulation. I think I just briefly mentioned it is the fact that you're able to kind of, not kind of, you're able to build and test these UI components in isolation before plugging them into the bigger picture. That, that's pretty nice. And then, uh, it has like a declarative approach to defining the UI, which is, Anyway, and then it has a virtual DOM. That is something that Angular does not have. That is something that Vanilla does not have. It, all of that. It, so it's kind of like how C uh, or C++, you know, the whole CrowdStrike situation or Zig, you can control the memory. Whereas something like Rust is not, you, it doesn't focus on memory control. It, it focuses on memory safety. So it's kind of hands off. You don't have to worry about any of that. So with React, you have a virtual DOM that is the, like a lightweight representation of the actual DOM. Whereas in like vanilla JavaScript, you have an actual DOM, the actual DOM, but like you have direct manipulation of that DOM if you want. And like state management, all of it. And so like the virtual DOM is, it is faster. It's supposed to be faster. Now, most projects, you're probably not going to notice I don't know what you're building actually. I don't know, but you're probably not going to notice unless something is just awry. But when you, when you go to manipulate the DOM directly, like you're adding and removing and updating elements. And then it has to, the browser that is, has to re-render the UI. And then it like recalculates all of those styles and then performs the layout operations and all of that crap. You don't have to do any of that with the virtual DOM because the virtual DOM, it, it's like an in-memory DOM where when changes occur, they're first applied to the virtual DOM. And you know what? So what's actually pretty cool is that with the virtual DOM, React, so let me actually tell you this first, React batches multiple updates together in the virtual DOM instead of like doing them one by one. Anyway, um, diff. So React, the virtual DOM, uh, when it compares the previous virtual DOM with the current virtual DOM, well, how do you do that? You know how you know how it works in GitHub, right? You have the the old code, the new code. You see the diffs. So React has a pretty dang good diffing. That's a word, I think. Diffing algorithm to see the differences between the old and the new, which they've obviously worked very hard to make very efficient and fast and simple. And the way it works is that it identifies the minimal set of changes required to then update the, the real DOM, not the virtual DOM, the real DOM. So instead of having to do this every time on the real DOM, like Angular, they, that Angular does have a, uh, what's the word? Change detection. That's what I'm looking for. Angular has change detection, but it, it does not have a virtual DOM. So if I understand this right, and I may not, I may not, if you know more than me, feel free to leave it in the comments so I can learn. Cause that's all, that's all I'm doing is I'm just trying to figure crap out, figure out a better way to build something fun. Um, anyway, it has to update the real DOM instead of like react with the virtual DOM. It runs the diffing algorithm, sees what's different and then updates the real DOM. And I've made a beautiful flow chart in mermaid chart sponsor of today's video, which we'll get to in a second. I know you've already heard of Mermaid JS. Mermaid Chart is the visual counterpart to Mermaid JS, created by the same person as Mermaid JS, and it is awesome. But let me just th uh, show you the workflow, how this works. So you first have the initial render. 
So when a component is rendered for the first time, where React builds the virtual DOM and the real DOM. I wonder if I should make this prettier. Should I make it yellow? Change the background color to a nice black. Ooh, that looks good. And then when the state or the props of the component change, React updates the virtual DOM. Huh, should I have it like... No, I know what I should do. What I'm able to do in this arrow, I can change it here, but I can also come over here. Where's the virtual DOM comparison? C updates. Vir oh, I'm putting in the wrong spot. Virtual DOM. Ignore, ignore, ignore. I'll put this here. Okay. So, and then when it updates the virtual DOM, this is when the diffing algorithm occurs and the new virtual DOM compares with the previous virtual DOM. And then React identifies the only changes that are needed and then React batches and updates the real DOM in a single operation, hence batching, which what that does is it reduces the number of direct DOM manipulations. What, what, would this be a better shape to be like, uh, to be like this? No. Or maybe this circle. Ooh, that's cool looking. What about this one up here? Do I make this like here? Ooh, that's clean. Okay. Anyway, this is mermaid chart. Mermaid Chart is a sponsor of this portion of today's video. You may have seen me create a, a tutorial on how to create flowcharts better than this one, how to create class diagrams and things of that nature. Basically, how to use Mermaid Chart utilizing Mermaid AI, which you can just chat with Mermaid AI right here and change anything you need. This was the initial render, actually. I created the initial render with all of the details, and this was actually it. Huh, I didn't know it was over here. And there you go. But then I changed that to be what you see over here. And of course you can change it all in this markdown like language. If you're familiar with mermaid.js, this is what you're familiar with. And then you're able to export this and throw it into a GitHub readme. So you have an actual usage of this usable flow chart or class diagram that you can mess around with within your GitHub readme or a GitHub issue if you want to describe an actual of uh, how the class diagram should be structured or how something should flow. You can have that in an issue to better describe to another engineer on your team or something with open source, how something should actually flow, how, I, how it should actually work right there in GitHub. You have plugins for JetBrains IDEs, for VS Code, Mermaid Chart is awesome. So check them out. Use my link in the description. Check out their product hunt for Mermaid Chart and Mermaid AI. It is really pleasant to use. I've, I've used Mermaid.js forever, so it's awesome. Try it out. Thanks for listening to my sponsored segment. Back to my experience with React.js. Okay, so we talked about virtual DOM, right? Talked about virtual DOM. We talked about some component-based architecture. But I also want to talk about something with that component-based architecture. Okay, I'm not going to go over it again. I know I spent a lot of time on it, but it's something rather interesting. And that is uh, JSX. So React has JSX files. I don't know if you noticed that. Whereas Angular, you're using TypeScript or JavaScript, JS or TS. And in the modules, what did you notice? Let's actually bring that back up. Yeah, okay, so this one. As you notice, in each module, you have the styling, you have HTML, and you have TS. However, when I gave that example of how you can do modules in React, where, where's the HTML file? Wait, where is that? Oh, we don't need the HTML file because we can write HTML right inside the JSX or TSX, which personally... I love. I also just noticed I'm wearing my headphones, but you know, jamming out over here while we're making this video. Y'all can't hear it. Probably looks funny that I'm doing this, but man, when you got good music going, you got good music going. You just, it's just good vibes. I don't know what to tell you. Oh yeah. Uh, uh, I almost talked about declarative AI, uh, AI, <laughs> declarative UI earlier, but then I just kind of said, eh, because I knew I was going to talk about it later. Now is later, by the way. And I like declarative AI, uh, good Lord, AI. I love declarative UI in React. It's nice. And the opposite of declarative is imperative. And I'm a pretty casual guy, right? So I like to be able to say, hey, go outside and pick some blackberries. Our blackberry bush has been producing like crazy lately. So we got to do it like every single day. That's all I have to say. I don't have to say, uh, this is how you go and pick blackberries. Uh, you first want to go out the door and then put on your shoes and then you have to walk 30 paces southeast to the blackberry bush. And then you grab the blackberry, you twist it a little bit, and then you put it in the bucket. And then you 
fill up the bucket, and then you bring it back inside. I don't have to say any of that crap. Okay, uh, I should probably show you what this means in actual code. So let me, uh, let me show you what this means in actual code. Oh, wow. How convenient. Uh, by the way, I'm going to actually pull this back over here. You're going to get deleted. Button. I think it should all work. Let's pretend that it does. npm run dev. Maybe I was in the actual correct thing. npm run dev. Okay, there we go. You remember this example from earlier? So this changing declarative. The code, the code, the way we do it's declarative. Um, this. When we click the button, set the button count to count plus one. That's it. That's all we say. That's it. This is the entire code as well. If you wanted to do it in vanilla JavaScript, this is the uh, imperative solution. So you have to give it step-by-step -step instructions, which those instructions are DOM mutations to get to your final UI instead of just describing what you want for your final UI. That's the difference here. So you have your HTML up here where you have you click zero times, click me. It's the paragraph and the button. And we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna pretend that this code works. You can, it'll give you a good idea. Um, let count equals zero, and then you have to have a uh, constant counter text, and then you have to have the counter button and then you have to add an event listener for the click and then count plus plus which is the same as count plus you know that counter text dot text content you click and then it has to update that's updating the text and that's how it works whereas here it is just this and we are using our hook in order to uh, count and then set count and obviously this is just a very very simple um version of it imagine if it wasn't simple though Imagine if this wasn't simple, just how complex it can get versus just the, like this is also where you start doing the, the, the crap like this and then the this and then the this. If you've seen that before, you know what I'm talking about. It's conditional rendering. So it's just a if else statement without the if else statement. Anyway, am I missing anything big? Uh, what other differences have I noticed? Have all of these been good things that I've noticed? All of these have been good things. What are the bad things? Got to throw some negativity into this video somehow. What are some bad things? Redux. If you have to use Redux in your application, God, I, mean, I don't know. I don't know. Redux, Redux has just given me a bad taste in my mouth for like the three times that I've tried to use it and then I just don't like it and then I just don't use it. Maybe it's really good. I don't know. I don't know. I haven't made it that far. Redux. Ah. Yeah. Oh. Mm. I actually have one, and it pertains to the uh, what I was talking about earlier that had next to nothing to do with the component-based architecture. But it's the difference between this right here and uh, how I had it before, like the module-based, where you could have it like like in uh, Angular. That's not the problem. The problem is when you when you dive into a code base where the person doesn't know what they're doing and you have both you have both structures in there. Why do you do that? Why do you <laughs> Why do you, why do you have all of these components in your component folder? And then all of these styles in your style folder. But then you have a uh, like some other folders over here that have the component and the styling in the same folder. I don't like that. I need it to be consistent. If it's if we're going with the 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 if we're going with one, you gotta stick to it. I don't like I don't like when it's commingled into the same. And why am I blaming React for that? Is because they don't care. They're like, oh, just be free, man. You do whatever you want, brother. Like that's this is React, bro. You want modules? go with modules you don't don't we're not here to judge and i don't like i guess that's do i not like that i don't like the people who do both and that's all i'm saying i i guess it's cool that you can do whatever you want but at the same time pick one pick one anyway i'm pretty sure i've been talking for a very long time but that's cool i like making these types of videos more than like my structured videos that are like oh 
let's try to get it as short as possible for retention. I just like talking. I mean, I talk to myself all the time. Why not just say to a camera? That's not weird. It's not weird. I think it's normal to talk to yourself. Yeah. Anyway, uh, I know. I, I'm sure I missed some stuff. I don't know. This is kind of like what I've just been... Right after... I, I know what's going to happen. Right after I upload this video, I'm going to be like, oh, this is something I really want to talk about. I really like this. I really like this or dislike this and react. And I really, really hated it in Angular or, or, or vanilla JavaScript. I know that's going to happen. But that's okay. Um... If I got anything wrong, because I probably did. If I got anything wrong, like, oh, React, actually, you don't have to do that with React. It can actually do X, Y, and Z. Um, let me know. I want to learn. You have any opinions on React versus the others or just your experience with the React, if you like it or not, let me know. Um, if you're one of the people who use the module-based structure and the other types of structures as well in the same project unsubscribe from my channel don't subscribe to my channel ever don't leave a comment i don't want to hear from you because you i don't like you you've made my life very difficult so don't do that anyway um y'all have a good day later <laughs>